Welcome back students to chapter 8 Economy and Occupations part 1. So today we will study economic activities in Brazil and in India. We will also understand what do we mean by GDP, GNI and how do we calculate per capita income. Along with this we will also prepare the polyline graph that they have asked us to prepare on page number 53. Children, last year we studied what is economics and the types of economic. So let's quickly revise it once again so that we understand the concept very well. Okay, so economics is the study of the use of scarce resources that have alternate uses. Now, what do we mean by this? Basically, there are people and people need resources to fulfill their desires. These resources are limited, but the desires are unlimited. So people need to make choices as to how to fulfill their unlimited desires. So geographically speaking, the activities related to the production distribution and consumption of goods and services in a specific region is called an economy. An economy of a country depends upon the economic activities carried out in the country. Economic activities are classified into groups using some important criteria. These groups are known as sectors of economy. People around us are engaged in different activities to earn livelihood. Some may be producing goods while others may be delivering services. An economy of a country depends on the economic activities that is primary occupations, secondary occupations and tertiary occupations which are carried out in a country. Now, some examples of primary occupation are beekeeping, extracting iron ore, then examples of secondary occupations, coir and rope making, jaggery making, then we have producing blades of the plow. Some examples of tertiary sector are television broadcasting, construction. Then we have teaching, driving buses, providing lodging and boarding for facilities as tertiary occupations as well. To understand this chapter in a more better way, we need to understand the concept of GDP, which means gross domestic product. In simple layman's language, gross means total, domestic means grelu, and product means goods and services. Now, what do we mean by GDP? GDP is the total money value or total value of all finished goods and services produced within a country in a set period of time. Now, what does GDP indicate? GDP indicates economic health of a country as well as the standard of living of its residents. Or in simple language, it tracks performance of a country. That means it's more and more goods and services are produced, higher will be the GDP. And if, if, and if less goods and services are produced, lesser will be the GDP. Only those goods which are produced within the boundary of a country are considered. For example, if we purchase a cell phone that was made in China and imported by India, then 
it adds to China's GDP. But if a foreign company like Ford or Vodafone manufactures goods in India, then they are added to India's GDP. Only final goods are calculated and not intermediate goods. For example, car is a final good and tires mm, and mm. other parts of a car are intermediate goods. Now that we've understood gross domestic product, that is GDP well, let's understand what is GNI. GNI is gross national income. It is the total income received by a country from its residents and businesses regardless of whether they are located in the country or abroad. It also includes money received from abroad such as foreign investments and economic development aid. Thus if you go to see GNI is equal to GDP plus net income from abroad. Economic activities in Brazil and India. Now in figure 8.2, they have given us pie charts which show the contribution of each sector in the country's GDP. So this is contribution of each sector in the country's GDP and this data is for 2006, for the year 2016. And the percentage of population engaged in various activities. Now we need to understand this particular pie chart carefully and answer the questions that they have given us. Now the first question is which country has a higher percentage of population engaged in primary activities? Now let's, they've asked us percentage of population engaged in primary activities. So if we see in Brazil, only 10% of the population is engaged in primary occupations, whereas in India, 48.8% of the population is engaged in primary activities. So this is the index. So with the help of this index, we understand which is the primary sector. So the primary sector is colored in blue. Now we move on to the next question. Okay. In which country is the contribution of tertiary sector greater in the GDP? Now we have to move to these two figures. Now, if we see here, the contribution of tertiary sector is 67% in Brazil and the contribution of tertiary sector is 57% in India. So if you go to see the tertiary sector is colored, is shown in gray. So the contribution of tertiary sector is more in Brazil than in India. So the answer is Brazil. Yes, the next question in which country is the share of secondary activities more in the GDP? Now they've asked contribution of secondary activities. Now we again have to refer to this particular graph pie chart. Now the secondary sector is shown in orange here. Okay, so the contribution of secondary sector of Brazil is 27.5 and the contribution of secondary sector to India's GDP is 26%. So Brazil, so the answer is Brazil. Okay, the next question, can we say that Brazil is an agrarian economy like India? Give reasons. So can we say that Brazil is an agrarian economy like India? No. We cannot because if you see here, okay, in Brazil, almost 71% of population is engaged in tertiary sector. We've already seen. Whereas only 10% of population is engaged in primary sector in Brazil. Again, the contribution of tertiary sector 
in GDP is 67%, whereas the contribution of primary sector is only 5.5%. So that's the reason Brazil cannot be called as an agrarian country. Now let's study figure 8.1, which is given on page number 52 of our textbook. Now if you see here, on the x-axis we have years 1960, 1980, 2000 and 2016. And on the y-axis we have US dollars in million. Okay. Then we have Brazil which is shown in blue color, India is shown in red color and USA is shown in green color. Now this is a bar graph. Okay. Now the heading of this particular graph is gross national income that is GNI from 1960 to 2016 in million US dollars. Okay. So if we study here. In 1960, USA had gross national income which was less than 100 million US dollars. Then um, in 1980, a little progress is shown in India and Brazil. Okay, However, Brazil has more gross national income than India and USA is leading it has almost 300 million US dollars. The gross national income is almost 300 million US dollars. In 2000, Brazil still leads India. Okay, and India is still, the gross national of income is still lower than Brazil. However, if you see here, USA, the gross national income of United States of America is more than 1000 million US dollars. If we see the 2016 data, we find, okay, now India has taken over. The gross national income of India is more than Brazil in the year 2016. However, as compared to USA, the gross national income of both the country is pretty less. So we can say by studying this particular graph, we can say that the gross national income of India is higher than Brazil. Brazil is one of the giants in mining, agriculture and manufacturing and it has a strong and rapidly growing service sector. On the other hand, India is still dependent on agriculture though service sector is also increasing in India. Like the Indian economy, the Brazilian economy is also a mixed economy. Both the Indian and the Brazilian economies are developing economies. Their per capita incomes are very less as compared to the developed countries like the USA, which we've already seen in the graph. It is interesting to note that though India has a higher national income as compared to Brazil, the per capita income of India is lower than Brazil. Now, can you think of the reason for the same? So let's answer this question in our next slide. On page number 53 of our textbook, they have given us a data and asked us to prepare a polyline graph. Now the data, okay, we've just studied in the last slide uh, as to India is exceeding in national income. However, it has the per capita of income, the per capita income of India is less than Brazil. And why is it so? Although the national income is higher than Brazil, why the per capita income of India is less than Brazil. Okay, so here they have given per capita income from 1960 to 2016 of Brazil, India and USA. Okay, so on the x axis we have the number of the years and on the y axis we have 
US dollars. Okay, so let's start drawing the graph. So if you see India's per capita income in 1960 is 90. That of Brazil is 240 and USA it's 3,250 US dollars. The per capita income. Then in 1980, the per capita income of India is 280. That of Brazil is 2,010 and of USA it is 14,200. 30. So USA is far ahead. Then in 2000, we have the per capita of, capita income of India is 450. That of Brazil is 3060. And of USA, it is 37,470. So with this, we understand that USA is a developed country. Okay, because the per capita income is huge. Then in 2016, the per capita of India is 1680. That of Brazil is 8840. And of USA is 56,280. Now, if you see here, the United States is a developed country. The population of this country is well educated. The country has the strength of many patents, modern technology and mechanical strength. This country is far ahead of Brazil and India in terms of national per capita income. So we've already seen, okay, this graph, this polyline graph shows that USA is far ahead than Brazil and India in terms of per capita income. It's a developed country. And India and Brazil are developing countries. India and Brazil are developing countries. These countries are progressing in the field of technological advancement, education and industry. The national per capita income of the countries is low as compared to USA. India's per capita income seems to be even lower as India's size is very large. So what is per capita income? Now per capita income means per person. If we calculate per capita income, the formula is the national income divided by the population. Now we've already seen in our previous slides that the national income of India is more than that of Brazil. But since the population of India is more than Brazil, the per capita income of India is less than Brazil because the population of Brazil is less as compared to India. With this children, we have come to an end of our today's presentation. Hope you have understood. Thank you. Stay home. Stay safe. Take care.